Well, welcome everybody. We are so glad that you're here. We may have a few more join us in just a moment, but um, we wanted to get started with you guys. And I'm going to say again, the good news is we don't have a ton of new things for you um, this week, and we think that's great. I do want to give you a second to notice that the bit.ly for the slides is there. So if you need to take a picture of that or write it down, I'm going to give you just a moment. And we're a small group today. We are not going to be upset if you unmute yourself and talk to us. That is totally fine. And I know we have Kevin in the chat that um, takes care of us. So Kevin, I think, probably put that bit.ly in there for us already. So, all right, everybody got that? It's in the chat if you did not. So, should have turned off my email. Just um, a reminder that we don't give professional development credit for these. They're just a live chat to help you. And anything that we say could change at any moment. At the end of any webinar, our news might change. And anything that we say, always check with your district leadership or your charter leadership um, for what they would like for you to do. So thanks for joining us. We're gonna get on to our chat. We only have a few things today, which is great. Um, we wanna make sure that you know who we are, who's talking to you today. Don't forget our listserv is in there. So if you uh, go to the slides yourself, you can join our listserv and we will um, keep you up with everything coming out that's the latest. We're really, really good, I promise you. Amy usually does most of our listserv stuff. We're really good about not giving you too many um, emails. We're very ginger with it for you, so very careful not to give you too much. And then our at-home uh, learning site there for Special Pops if you need that. So we're gonna go through just a couple questions um, and then we'll see what you guys have. So this one says, as you can read, um, I know that we're out of school for the year, but what about summer school or ESY? Should we try to work on remote ESY? And the answer is, we don't know, but TEA is working on it. Um, their answer as of last week to our director, Dr. Estrada was, they're working on it. They're gonna give us some more guidance, so hold tight. We're not quite there yet, but they are gonna give us a little more guidance on that. And the next question, uh, Amy, um, this, yeah. you wanna do this I one? Yes, um, so this one has come up in a couple of different places. Um, and one of this is how do we handle um, the situation of families of students with disabilities who are not responding to the communication? So meaning they're not responding to email, they're not phone calls, um, they're just not responding to anything. And this is um, new on the April 23rd from TEA. Um, that districts should very carefully document all communications with families, including the unsuccessful attempts um, to reach those families. Attempts to reach the family should be done in multiple channels, not just necessarily a phone call. So an email, a phone call, a text, um, even possibly getting on social media and trying to reach out through um, Messenger. Um, and we want to make sure that it's in all the language that are most accessible to that family. So if you're, if you are calling and it is in English, but that family is a Spanish only speaking, um, we need to work on a way to get a translator available to help um, with getting that communication. Um, and Debbie said, is this a good to send the ready, willing and able? Yes, that should have been communicated. You're ready willing and able letters definitely need to be mailed out to families homes for sure emailed to the families um, because you need that in your documentation that you have told them that we're here we want to serve your child um, and if they're not communicating with you um, and i do want to say if you go to um, we'll show you our youtube channel at the end on our youtube channel we also last week uh, had some great ideas of, well, what are ways that we can use to translate for families? So that is out there. Um, if you go to our, we'll show you the YouTube at the end, but that's out there um, to follow up on what Amy just said. All right. Um, the next question is kind of along the same lines. Um, not able to facilitate learning at home. Um, so should how should our districts or local education agency, which is our districts and charters, respond to families who have indicated they will not be able to facilitate the distance learning options being offered? 
Um, this is kind of one of those that basically if the parents are like, I just, we just don't have enough internet bandwidth. We don't have enough. Um, we don't have any computers. We, I'm working. My mom can't, my grandmother can't facilitate the learning. I don't have time. They've just kind of stopped um, facilitating learning for our students with disabilities. Um, what we want to do is we want to send out the ready, ready, willing and able letters to those families so that they understand that when they are able to, we will be there for them. And that we need to just document to all the, um, all that communication to the family. And if they've indicated that they're not able to, um, we need to consider the barriers that's causing that participation. Is that because we're only doing it through e-learning and that family really needs paper packets? Is it because we're doing it only in English and that family needs Spanish? So we need to consider those barriers and what are we doing as a district or teacher or school to remove those barriers? Um, it's very important that we're not causing the barrier with the language or the facilitation of the instruction. Um, and then if we wanna continue to maintain that ongoing communication and attempt to communicate every single week, um, just because they've said in April 1st, well, I'm not going to be able to, to facilitate this learning does not mean that our teachers don't keep calling the families, checking in on them, helping them facilitate the learning, helping them problem solve on how to get that instruction done. Um, and we want to make sure that we are um, documenting all of that because we are still, districts are still responsible for FAPE. Um, they are still responsible for that free appropriate public education. Um, another thing that was recommended by TEA, and I kind of took it off this slide because we're going to talk about it in the next one, was the possibility of compensatory services. So, um, Lauren, if you want to flip to the next one, I think that's what it was. Was yeah. all students be eligible for services? <clears throat> Um, so one of the things that was suggested by TEA for the previous question when families are not facilitating learning that that our committees will need to reconvene when it's appropriate to consider compensatory services, but this is a whole other question too. So, yeah, so I, I think it just goes perfectly with what you said, Amy. So yeah. we're going to get some more guidance on compensatory. Um, and so the question will be you know, about FAPE, did they get it? And then there'll be some other factors. So as TEA comes out with the document, um, that might be a time when we have another webinar with you guys or send it out with, you know, notes so that you'll know. And obviously um, Region 10 has your directors and coordinators in contact um, to help with that. But we will definitely make sure we get it out to you when we get that so that you're aware of what happens as well. Um, and we just want to make sure make sure that teachers if you're a teacher you are documenting everything you're doing so that your director ha or your coordinator has a full picture of what we as a, of what you as a district has been doing so right. that you're not making assumptions um one assumption would be well you've been in constant communication when in actuality as a teacher you weren't um, so we just want to make sure that um, we're documenting everything and we've given you lots of great resources for the documentation. Yes, so if you haven't seen those, go to our YouTube channel, which I'll show you again at the end, and we'll show you some of those on those as a whole um, meeting on progress monitoring, a whole hour on it. So if you need that kind of support. All real right. Quick, no, hang on one just a second. Yeah. Uh, real quick on our 18 plus students and our um, students that are aging out, there have been questions about uh, potential ESY and compensatory services as well. Would they be eligible for that? We are waiting also for that guidance, not just for our students who are continuing to earn credits, but those that might be aging out, would they still be eligible for either ESY or compensatory services? Um, especially I would think work-based for ESY, only because if they were connected with Texas workforce, would they have lost some of those skills? Would they need that recoupment in order for Texas workforce to continue to promote them being employed somewhere? So we're still working on that information, but that is, um, that's hot topic, big time for transition. Thank you, Sandy. All right, we're a small group today, which is awesome. If you have something you're wondering about, um, I've got some people on with us today that have more knowledge than I do about some things going on. So 
if you have questions, feel free to unmute. I'll hum a tune or something here to give you a moment to think it up. You can write it in the chat if you don't want to ask it, um, but we are here to take them. I'll give you a second to think. I feel like I should do insert Jeopardy theme here maybe, huh? Okay. Um, I have a question. Thank you, Christina. How are you? Yeah, good. How are you? <laughs> good. Ask away. Um, well, I know there's been a lot of discussion about um, all the teachers and paraprofessionals, support staff contacting, you know, families and the families are probably just being bombarded by all these contacts. And there's been a lot of discussion on how case managers can somehow create like a central place or something that could kind of coordinate those efforts so that kind of streamline what we're giving to the parents. Um, has there been any suggestion on what the best way to do that would be? Huh. I was going to say, did you have something already prepared that you wanted to share with everybody? Because that's a <laughs> great question. Um, I don't I know. Google. I would say most people Google would probably use a Google form only because that way our gen ed teachers could access it, our direct services folks, our PTs, our OTs, whatever we have, um, the speech therapist. I, I would think Google form, but we haven't created anything. Um, that's certainly something we can look into. Um, there were several um, on the docu documentation ones that we had out there that you could use and just change up what's on it. But um, I was hoping you had one and we're going to share what you had. <laughs> also, I, I think the discussion I think of, to put in place, um, especially with us opening up Texas again and, you know, all yeah. these changes. And then if we, you know, whether or not we're going to be up and running in the fall, I just, I think, I think we need to come up with something to make it a little more streamlined. Well, I think, I think the discussion should be also, it definitely, the lead on that streamlining, that streamlining communication needs to come from the case manager. And that case manager needs to kind of take some um, ownership of who's gonna be calling and what are we calling about and keeping record of that. Um, because that case manager is the one who's ultimately responsible for what happens in the ARD. Um, that's not saying that the case manager has to do all the communication. I mean, you can, they can have, they have, you know, let's say it's a resource um, teacher and they have um, two paraprofessionals and one is a bilingual paraprofessional and we have a bilingual, obviously we're going to use that paraprofessional to communicate to the parents through, but we need to record that and make sure that if that bilingual prepare professional is the one making the communication that that's documented somewhere so that we have that information in the R. Um, but I, I do think that I would probably start with your case managers as the ones who are facilitating and streamlining that communication. And then it kind of go down from there and have a, have a solid a schedule of calling parents um, and who's doing that um, because it really does need to be, um, cause they will get bombarded with a call from case manager, a call from a paraprofessional. I mean, I would not have my paraprofessionals just be calling kids. I would be asking, there has to be a purpose why your paraprofessionals are calling. Sure. So that, that would be where I would start. And double check with your district or charter that the paraprofessionals, that that is a duty that they can perform. Yeah. We're not putting them in, in a position um, to have overstepped. Um, potentially what the district had already laid out for them. Yeah. Yes. Thank yes, definitely. Thank you guys. Anybody, thank you for that question. And then Anybody Vivica, have one? Uh, oh. Kevin, do you want to do the chat, sweetie? Oh, yes. Tell us what's in the chat. Uh, there was just uh, one comment from one of our participants that mentioned the Google form that their district has is basically for single contacts. Okay. So I think I would just share it maybe and see, because I think that's a good point of not bombarding parents because I know I don't want to be bombarded. So, um, I, and I can tell you that it's also good just to have it so that we all know that somebody's been contacted. So even if it's a single one, I wonder if you could share it. I don't know 
what form you're using. If it's a Word document or something Excel, that might not be. So I would just see how, how that's shareable. Great question. Anybody else have one? I see the chat lighting up, so I'll let Kevin tell me if there's something in there. Just someone uh, mentioning uh, to please share whatever resources that, <laughs> that we have. Guys, and I just want to say thank you, guys. Um, there are so many people sharing. I mean, New Region 10 was a great region, but I'm telling you, people are so not being stingy with the great things they're creating. Everybody's trying to eliminate um, the, the double duty. So thank you so much for sharing all the great things you're creating so others can benefit. We really appreciate that. Yeah, and we've tried to share out what people have. So if you have one you think is pretty good, we're happy to share it with everybody. And um, we'll send it out to the, to the listserv. So anything else you guys are thinking about, wondering about, hoping for? Y'all are just like, no, it's a nice day. I want to go outside. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show a couple things. And then if you think of something, we're going to keep at it. But, oh, this is one I thought it was on. But Amy put it again. Yes. No, I did put that in there. Oh, I guess we left it in from last I week. I don't know where that came. I did in the in the chat. I did drop the Google folder link for the progress monitoring and IEP documentation for those of you that are needing kind of a um, a guide on how you should be um, documenting that information. So that link is in there for you, um, and it goes directly to our shareable folder um, with all of our forms that we've been curating throughout this process on how to document services, um, contact, what's IEPs and what's happening, so. Thank you. And so I had said this was in last week's, but here it is again, the, um, the links for some of those. I know a lot of people are using talking points. They had said last week, um, there's also Google Translate and Microsoft Translator for you. So if you need some of that, a quick reminder um, that we do have our special population s'more um, that's really everything COVID related and the at home learning site. So all of that is still there. Oh, I do this every time I click on it instead of, yeah. Okay, good job. Okay, neat. And then want to remind you that these keep getting updated are. Um, low incidence and AT s'more, our early childhood, dyslexia. I don't know if dyslexia has been updated. And then the R10 at home instructional support. Those are all on there. And I know we had Katie and Andrea on earlier. Anything you guys want to add or say that's been added to these that you think we should know? We actually sent out a new AT lid one that has this month was um, staying active while at home for kids, for parents, for teachers, whoever. Um, we will make sure that we update that so that we'll change it in the links if you'll send that to me, Katie. We can also send it out through our listserv as well so that people have access to your updated one. Anything from early childhood that you guys have going on? Um, no, the only thing we have are um, virtual office hours tomorrow from 1030 to 1130. And um, I think the only thing that we've added to this more is the, um, we had a, added a section for autism. And so that is linked on that. Awesome, thank you guys. All right. We want you to know that here's all the links to our YouTube channel. Remember, I've talked about it twice. It's got all of those. It's got all the slides from our other meetings, and we have those there. Uh, Sandy's recorded Zoom about transition is there. Um, live chats on, I think we're, this is probably going to be our last one um, that we do live. I think what we'll do is wait until we have further guidance on ESY and compensatory, and then we'll likely have another one. But we're feeling like um, you guys are doing a great job. And we want you to know while doing that, that we are always here.
for you. Here's one more access to the slides. Uh, and then I'll make sure you have our emails and phone numbers so that if you have something specific, we're happy to help you with that. But make sure you write down access to the slides. Kevin, do we have anything else in the chat that we need to address, talk about, or a question? No, no new questions right now. Okay. Anybody else have anything? I'm going to go back to our emails if you need to get a hold of us. Um, I will talk real briefly. Um, some people have asked us about summer trainings because the truth is, you know, you guys are still going to have to get your PD hours. Um, most, well, all of our June trainings that we had out there um, are definitely online now. They're going to be virtual rather than face to face. So, what we will do is send all of that information here in the next few weeks through the listserv. So make sure you're on our listserv right there so that you will get those updates and we can um, make sure you know what you can attend this summer virtually or some of you I know that are on our coordinators and, and the, the like so you guys can send it out to your teachers. So we are here for you, um, but much of it will be virtual. Uh, we don't really know about July and August yet. <laughs> we'll see. All right, any questions that we have or chat? Okay. Team, anything else that you are thinking of now that we're started that you wanna talk about? Can't think of anything. I mean, we're kind of in a groove right now. I think we're kind of have a little momentum in what we're doing. So um, good for you guys. I'm, I'm really happy that it's kind of settled out a little bit that we're not all stressed as much, but um, yeah, I like waiting until we have some more information and always email us if you need us. We're, we're anxiously answering emails as quickly as possible. And once again, I wish we had you guys on National Hero Day because you are heroes. What you're doing to support students and their families is not lost on us. We know how hard you work. Um, I heard one teacher say this last week, I've never worked so hard. Um, and I believe that's true. So thank you for everything you do for our students and their families. Um, I know they appreciate you guys. Um, I'm going to, Kevin, anything else that we need to talk? I see the, the chat I can see going, so I'm just asking if there's anything we need to talk about. No, nothing new in the, the chat to discuss. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you guys for attending. I won't... Um,